and of having opportunity to share in emotionals with you that's a benefit to me. <laughs> After all, I'm like you. What's in it for me? I get to get acclimated to the heat out here. It's only 96, maybe 98. Pretty close in between, probably 97. And in so saying that, I thank you for that because that helps me to adapt to the different climates and changes that we all go through every day. And <laughs> sometimes are good, sometimes are bad. But today has been a day of challenges in the sense of allowing God, through His Holy Spirit, who arranges the circumstances, to be God Himself and to cause circumstance to dictate and to arrange where and what he would want done as opposed to what I want done. And you see, for me, that can happen because I am constantly reminding God, even though he believed me the first time I said it, but constantly telling him, look, Lord, I don't want anything except that you bring it, you know, and like the guys say in the gang, bring it on. Well, I want you to bring it on and give it to me so I can benefit from it and learn and, hey, if it's going to, you know, smack me around, well, bring it on. You know, it's going to be good because even those trials and tribulations that we go through, we can count it all joy because God causes them in some way to accomplish his purpose in us, sometimes for teaching, sometimes for preaching, sometimes for just warning us, guiding us. As the Lord said, whom you know with the chasing us, and if you're being chastened, if life just isn't quite the way you wanted it to be, guess what? <laughs> God is at work. It's not the economy. It's not the world. It's not the devil taking away your joy. But it's God who is at work, both to do and to will of his good pleasure in your life. So how you adapt to it, how you react to it, and how you treat it is up to you. You can be a victim, and I'm not going to say a victor because that's God's victory. You can be a victim, or you can learn that God is in control. That's your choice. Mine has been a challenge all day, <laughs> so I can't wait to hear what he might say, especially in K. <laughs> When you're tempted to settle for the temporal, what are you investing in? These things which build up, nurture, and those things which build up, nurture, and edify, or that which is going to snare you, entrap you, make you ashamed, and eventually destroy you? Which are you investing in? Our holy God both commands and warns, you shall be holy, for I am holy, 1 Peter 1.16. And if God says we are to be holy, then holiness is possible. Holy means to be set apart unto God, pure and simple. Another word for holy is sanctified, which means that because God has set us aside for himself, our lives, all that we are and do, are to be set aside for him. We are not our own. We are his. Even our very breath is given to us by him. Your body is not your own. You cannot do with it as you please and please God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. And Galatians 5, 16, 17. If we sow to the flesh, we will reap corruption. Our sins will find us out. Numbers 3, 23. But if we sow to the Spirit, we will reap eternal dividends. Galatians 6, 8. How my heart is burdened by the awful harvest so many are reaping. The pain the snare, the destruction they've fallen into, and the futility of it all. They are reaping what they have sown. It is time for us to stop and take a good look at what we are doing with our lives, our time, our energies, and our bodies. We must become vigilant and walk circumspectfully. Our tendency is to spend all of our time worrying about how we look on the outside. But God tells us to watch over our heart 
and our mind with all diligence, for it is what comes from the heart that defiles us, not what we wear on the outside. As we think, so are we. The things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and those that defile the man. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, slanders. These are the things which defile the man. Matthew 15, 18-20. What we do on the outside is merely a reflection of who we are on the inside. Take a good look at your days, at the way you spend the weeks that fly by, at the year that is suddenly over. There are so many who name the name of Christ, but who do not have time for God. Many get to know him, time to meet with him. There are so many who name the name of Christ who do not have time for God. They do not have time to get to know him. They do not have time to meet with him daily, time to pray with him, time to get to know his word, time to share his love with others. Their time is consumed instead by self. Then it's gone never to be redeemed because it isn't and hasn't been spent on eternal values god commands us to redeem the time to buy it back to control it and not let it control you because the days are evil ephesians 5:16. god wants us to invest our time and energies in things that have eternal value and in people whom he created for himself not in that which is useless or temporal or self-centered or destructive what are you doing with your money? Are you spending it on earthly treasure? Or are you making eternal investments? Are you laying up treasures on earth or in heaven? When I was speaking in Memphis a few years ago, a woman heard me saying we were praying for $3,000 so that we could translate our precept Bible studies into Chinese. At that very time, the woman had been looking at a $3,000 oriental rug that the salesman had assured her would last forever. Instead, she made an internal investment. She gave the 3000 to Precept Ministries, and those equipped Chinese believers became her oriental truck, her oriental rug. In other words, she's saying that the same identification of what was one that they used was made to become a memory of the other. So that way she had invested in the kingdom of God, and according to this, has so too received reward for it. We will be held accountable for all our investments. And while the rewards or losses begin even now in the present age, according to Mark 10, 28, 31, these will not be known fully until there is no more time to change the course of our life. When death comes, what has been done is done. There is no second chance. For our Lord will come quickly and he will render to every man according to what he has done. Revelation 22:12. 12. Examine your life. And no matter what it costs, Forsake that which is not of God and invest your life in that which has eternal value. Pray about your investments. Find out how God wants you to use your mind, your time, your money. Be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Fastest way you want to get me to ignore you is to talk about money. <laughs> and that's not what she's talking about. But the reality is, is that I see... And because I'm from, or I have been overseas, our culture is being the richest, po the poorest person in our country is the richest person overseas. And in a lot of countries, that's true. Because we have an opportunity to always change our circumstance and go somewhere else, even if you're in the poorest state in the union, as I was at one time. And I... <laughs> Even when I was working in that state, I think I, I never had enough to eat and I never had enough to pay my bills. It was just a continual downward spiral that I just couldn't get out of. So what did I do? One day I prayed and up and left and went to Alaska. Started over. Wow, was that a novelty. <laughs> but you know, I prospered. And in that prosperity, I was able to eventually pay all my back bills and pay my bills and then spoil myself and lose myself and get hurt and wind up broke again <laughs> in Alaska and had to do it all over again. But what we set our affections on and our mind towards is what determines what will be our reward in heaven. If we have set our mind on sharing 
that which we have, the little bit we do, even if it's only a penny, God will honor that because of the heart that you have that was willing to share the least of what you could with the most of what he could do with it. And so it's not about the matter of money or the matter of food or the matter of goods that you have, but it's a matter of where your heart is at with what you've got. I used to give everything I had away. And if I did that today, my wife would kill me. Although I still have, we got in an argument over some material possession. Guess what went in the trash can? <laughs> and I'm still married. Oh my gosh. Grace and mercy are from my wife. <laughs> but no, I mean, I wouldn't throw away anything that was you know, precious to her. But what frustrated her was that if something was important to me and it became a source of contention, I trashed it. I don't want to be attached to anything that's of this world. You know, I want to be looking towards the kingdom of God and his righteousness and being happy with the fact that I'm leaving all this behind and there isn't anything that holds me back. I don't want any of this. This is all second-rate used stuff compared to what God's got in store for us in heaven. So why not invest in that which we are looking forward to rather than be interested in all this, which is <laughs> poor imitation. <laughs> I'd rather have name brand. God. <laughs> but that's me. Maybe for you, you need to have the designer clothes and jeans and car and be a star. And even in your heart, if you are one of those, God can still meet you where you're at because for you, sometimes those circumstances you find yourself in are just as frustrating, though if we compared them to a poor person, it would be different, are just as frustrating as the poor person that goes through his agonies. So for you, if God is speaking to you in some way and you have the prosperous things of the world, then allow God to be used through them to touch others and God will allow you to have them in abundance. He didn't say it was impossible for a rich man to enter in heaven. He just said it's really almost that way because if you are prosperous, you already know how tough it is to let go. And sometimes when you're poor, you know how tough it is to be forgiving of a prosperous person. So somewhere in between, God is speaking to us and saying, today, listen to me, and you'll find the truth. All you got to do is ask him. <laughs>